Good morning, everybody. It's Brooke from Mrs. Coghill Farm. And y'all, I had an idea today. And that was to show y'all the pea chicks. And I thought, I'm gonna have to go all over this property to find her because what's happened is she's still not bringing their babies up to the populated area. She's been keeping them back in the back pasture. She's been frequenting the garden area. And I just knew this was gonna be a wild goose chase, so to speak, to try to find her and her babies. I walk outside and I think to myself, it's a good thing I got my tennis shoes on because it's gonna require a lot of searching. Wrong answer. Let me show y'all what's going on. Okay, first things first. Do y'all see this pea hen right here? So this is Miss Lewis. This is Ozella's daughter who has been with her. I got my boys trying to get some loving and they're making the camera move around, but Miss Lewis has not left her mother's side the whole time these pea chicks have been alive. And Rocky, everybody sees you, buddy. Rocky said I had to stop and show everybody how big he is and how loving he is and how glad he's here with us. Okay, buddy, we're talking about pea chicks. We're not talking about puppies, okay? I know. It's exciting, isn't it? Here comes Bandit. We gotta let Bandit have his turn before we carry on. Come here, big boy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Y'all are so sweet. I think it'll be best if I go in the area where the chickens are before I continue. I noticed something about Mr. Gus the other day that I wanted to show you guys because I haven't noticed it in the past. Look at his eyelashes on his left eye. Is that not crazy? They are like a golden color. When I saw that, I said I had to share it with you guys. During that short time that I was given the whole spiel about the puppies and Gus's beautiful eyebrows, these two were able to make their way out of the chicken area. But I am so happy to report to you guys that all five pea hens, pea, uh, not, not five pea hens, all five pea chicks are alive and well. Y'all look at them and look how much they've grown. And there they are with Miss Lewis and Ozella, the mother, and five baby pea hens. I said it again, five baby pea chicks. But I'm, I'm so happy to know that she's bringing them. I'm not gonna continue to chase her. She's headed towards the, the wooded area which she's been hanging out most of the time. But I'm so happy to know that all five babies are alive and doing well and that she's bringing them to the chicken area now. Here they go. That's the area that they hang out. It's back here along the wood line behind Moody, Joe, Mo, and Topper's area. And it's obviously safe over there or they wouldn't still be here. So now that we're all excited and happy to know that all five of the pea chicks are alive and well, I wanted to come into the aviary so that I can show y'all the progress that the plants have made in here. I am truly amazed because first of all, up until yesterday, we haven't had any rain. It's been super hot here, super dry, which it has been across most of the United States, I know. But um, Mary Carl has been doing a wonderful job at keeping these plants watered and they have simply flourished. Let me show y'all. So while we didn't plant this Papa John fig this season, we thought that the big freeze that we had here in Alabama it got down to about 14 degrees, which is way, way colder than what we normally experience here in the winter. It, we thought it was dead. It 
did die back to the ground and it was just little spindly sticks, which is typical for a winter fig. But when springtime emerged, we didn't see any new growth. But we gave it a little bit of time and I'm so glad we did because it's came back out, which tells me that if we don't have another winter like we did last year, this little baby next year is probably going to produce some figs and maybe quadruple if not get five or six times its size now. So here's some lantana and we all know lantana is just about relentless. It'll tolerate the, the hottest sun, the hottest temperatures. Uh, it's just, it doesn't require a lot of maintenance and it has done extremely well, which is what we expected. There's a couple of more over here. I know I need to add some mulch in here, but I just haven't had time. So here's the beauty berry and it's got a few berries on it, believe it or not. Um, while they may not be ready this season, they are uh, producing and I think they're gonna continue to, to thrive. And I'm gonna step back here so I can show you some of the plants that have been in here. And that is some of these grasses and the ferns. We planted those last year, but you can tell that the bottom of this aviary is starting to fill up like we want it to. And here's the contorted hazelnut that I did not know the name, but you guys were so nice to tell me that it um, actually is in the hazelnut family. It doesn't produce any nuts, but it's, um, it's a beautiful little decorative piece in here. And the purple petunias, the Mexican petunias. This one we planted earlier this year, but this is the one we just planted and you can see it's doing well. Now this is the um, Turk's cap and it's it's alive but it hasn't it hasn't done that much this season but i think it'll i think next year will be its year do y'all remember this nest do you remember how huge it was when they when they completed the build how tall it was how round it was they've they've literally deconstructed this nest in order to rebuild in the other spot so you know it is what it is. I certainly can't do anything for them to, to make them feel happier. I think we've done everything we can, but we shall see. They sure are beautiful. And I would love to see a little baby Victorian crown pigeon. There again, the female has the colored band on in the back, the orange pink color, and the male is in the front with the silver colored band really can't tell a lot of difference in them. Um, the male is slightly smaller than her, but if, you, if they're, I mean, even standing beside each other, you really can't tell the difference. So after I got finished showing you guys the aviary, I thought I'd come back over to the back part of the property where Moody's shelter is and their electric netting comes around by the wood line see if I couldn't get a better look at the, the little chicks, which are not so little anymore, by the way. Of course, her daughter is still in tow and she feels safe over here. So Ozella just squeezed through the electric fence along with her chicks and her daughter won't be far behind And she just came right back through the fence. Look at them. Oh my gracious. I hope y'all are as excited as I am to see all of these babies. And I will continue to update you guys. As I now know that she's bringing them closer. She feels like they are past the vulnerable time to where they can indeed be around some of our other animals. And this time, we didn't have those big boys. Come here, Dee Dee. I don't think she knows her name. But the big boys didn't come with us, but the little girl did. See, Miss Dee Dee, she doesn't want to miss a beat. She wants to go with me every time I 
get aboard the side by side. And that's okay with me because I've enjoyed having her along. And so happy to see how much better she looks. Come here, Dee Dee. Come here, baby. Show everybody how pretty you are. Yeah, come here. She is on a mission. Yes, she is. But I'm so happy to report that she looks so much better. And she is living her best life here at Cog Hill Farm. Wow, y'all. That went super smooth. I thought I was going to be out here trying to run around, look for the pea chicks. I thought I was going to have to go through the woods. But lo and behold, it was meant for y'all to see them this morning. And me too. Because there they were, right there in front of me. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you hadn't already. Um, share this with your friends. Share this with your family. And I appreciate each and every one of you.